Hey folks, today I want to talk about one of Sonic's oldest villains, the character with two names, Knack the Weasel, aka Fang the Sniper. Fang first debuted in 1994, and then appeared in a flurry of games before disappearing from the Sonic universe. He went from being a pretty recurrent character, to just being another forgotten one, which is a shame because he's got a unique look and personality that the fanbase seems to love. Fang is particularly interesting because his name and his species has always been in flux. In this video, I'll be touching upon Nack's origin and creation, any name and species changes he's experienced, all of his video game appearances, his characterization in the British Fleetway comics, and, although I'm by no means an expert, I'll briefly dip into Archie's portrayal of Fang too. Thank you to anyone who requested Fang, he's been my most requested character to cover by far. In the past, I've been called out for using the name Knack. I'll explain why I tend to do so at the end of this video, but in the meantime, apologies if I use Knack and Fang interchangeably throughout this video. Without further ado, let's get going. Knack was first created for the 1994 Sega Game Gear game Sonic Triple Trouble, released in Japan as Sonic & Tails 2. Sonic Chaos, or Sonic & Tails, being the game's predecessor. As the name suggests, in Triple Trouble, Sonic & Tails battle a trio of villains, including Knuckles, Dr. Robotnik, and Knack, in a quest to find the Chaos Emeralds. Dr. Robotnik and Knuckles work in unison, just like in Sonic 3, but Knack is more of an independent antagonist. He's a treasure hunter, who battles Sonic in the special stage for control of the Chaos Emeralds. Knack has no idea of the Emerald's true power, and only wants them so he can later sell them on the black market. Knack appears as a boss at the end of five special stages, which, in this game, are accessed by smashing open an Emerald monitor. In the first of these five stages, Knack's own trap backfires, and in the remainder, Sonic has to ward off Knack, who appears riding a flying bike with various different attachments. Knack also appears towards the end of the game, in Atomic Destroyer Act 3, and gets scared off by Dr. Robotnik, showing that he's not really in cahoots with Robotnik. Knack doesn't serve much of a narrative role, but his Treasure Hunter's outfit gives him a unique look, and in a game that also features Knuckles, Robotnik, and Metal Sonic, Knack is still memorable and doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Knack is a really interesting character because there's a whole bunch of oddities and inconsistencies surrounding everything from his name to his species, so let's dive in and talk about his creation. Shinichi Higashi, who goes by the online handle Toma, was Knack's original designer, and over the past few years he's been pretty active on Twitter, and has revealed plenty of secrets about the origin of Knack. Let's talk about Knack's name first. Knack was the character's original name, but due to Knack and Knuckles sounding quite similar in Japanese, the name had to be changed. In Japanese, Knuckles' name is pronounced Nakuruzu. You'll have to excuse my pronunciation there. What's really interesting about this is that in the Sonic the Screensaver CD-ROM available for PC in the 90s, there's a bunch of icons that can be used for the PC. The Knuckles icon is labelled as Knack, Pretty interesting. A contest ran in Japanese gaming magazine Shukan Famicom Shushin to give Knack a new name, and Fang was eventually decided upon by Sega following this contest. Toma has also explained that Fang was originally designed as a Jaboa, a kind of hopping desert rodent. You can see elements of Fang's Jaboa origins in his design. He has long ears, a springy tail, and four fingers. Ultimately, it was decided that Fang would be a hybrid, half Jaboa and half Wolf, which might explain his prominent Fang. Fang the Jaboa doesn't really roll off the tongue, so Fang the Sniper became his full name in Japan. What's really interesting about the name is that some pre-release screenshots of Triple Trouble show Fang armed with a small cork gun, a weapon that he doesn't wield in the final game, making the name not make a whole bunch of sense at the time. Now, over in the West, Knack was retained as the character's name, though curiously, a British magazine called Mean Machine Sega introduced Knack as Jet. 
It's a unique oddity and I can't find any other reference to this potential name for the character. Nax's species was altered, so he became a weasel, a familiar animal to Western audiences with a reputation for being sneaky. The sniper aspect of Fang's name was dropped too, so Fang the Sniper became Nack the Weasel. An understandable change as the West was more squeamish about references to guns appearing in kids' games. Toma has also revealed that Nack was originally designed to come from a place outside of the world of Sonic called Different Space, which kinda makes sense considering Nack is usually found in the special stage. Finally, during the design phase, Nack looked a little different, shorter and plumper. Toma has revealed that he wanted Fang to be small, quick, but a very sloppy, unhateable villain. However, when creating sprite art for Nack, he realized he was too small to draw facial expressions on, so had to be redesigned. Nack's general face shape was designed to pay homage to Opa Opa, protagonist of the Fantasy Zone series. Nack was actually a pretty recurrent Sonic character in the 1990s. Let's go through his other appearances. Nack would make his second appearance a year after Triple Trouble in the racing game Sonic Drift 2 from 1995. In this game and all others onwards, Nack would be referred to as Fang in all regions, so I'll make the switch too. Fang rides an airbike called the Marvelous Queen, which may or may not be the same bike that appeared in Triple Trouble. I'd assume it was the same bike given a bit of a makeover. The Marvelous Queen possesses the ability to toss oil balls onto the track, which cause anyone who crashes into them to spin out and lose rings. Fang's image also appears in the 1995 Game Gear game Tails Adventure. This game is pretty different from most Sonic games, it's quite slow paced and involves a lot of exploration and a little bit of puzzle solving. Tails can pick up a Fang medallion, which grants him a cool passive effect, increasing his chances of finding a ring after defeating an enemy, an effect that feels quite fitting considering Fang's background as a treasure hunter. Fang made his fourth appearance in two years when he appeared as one of the playable fighters in Sonic the Fighters in 1996. Fang's gun, which fires corks, features prominently in his moveset, so Fang the Sniper finally makes sense as a name. Fang is amongst the eight Chaos Emerald Guardians battling to determine who should fly to Dr. Robotnik's Death Egg 2 to destroy it. Fang, who has possession of a Chaos Emerald because he stole one, is usually a bad guy, but in this game he's willing to be in the runnings to face Robotnik though I assume he's doing it with the hope of snagging all of the Chaos Emeralds in the process. Fang's stage in the game is Casino Night Zone, further painting him as a bit of a sleazy character. Sonic the Fighters would be Fang's final appearance for a number of years until Sonic Generations, but in the 15 years between those two games, Fang nearly appeared in a couple of games. Rather infamously, between 1994 and 96, Sega worked on Sonic Extreme, a game with a long and storied history that was eventually cancelled. The abridged history of Sonic Extreme is that it started life as a Sonic & Knuckles follow-up, being developed for the Sega 32X, before development shifted to the Sega Saturn. Sonic Extreme went through a number of different dramatic direction shifts before being cancelled outright. Sonic Extreme's boss encounters, designed and developed by Christina Coffin, were to take place in large, Nights into Dreams-esque spaces, where Sonic would battle oversized versions of different enemies. Screenshots and promotional images, showing a Metal Sonic and Fang boss battle, were showcased in various magazines. Coffin has explained that the enemies are oversized because, as an early 3D experience, the team wanted to give players a large target that was easy to hit though I don't know what the in-game explanation for the size discrepancy would have been, if any. The development of Sonic Extreme sounded downright hellish and has been discussed in more depth elsewhere, but unfortunately, the death of Sonic Extreme also brought about the temporary disappearance of Fang the Sniper. After Extreme, Fang was considered for Sonic Heroes during the very early design phase of the game. He would have been teamed up with Bark the Polar Bear and Bean the Dynamite from Sonic the Fighters, but this plan didn't come to fruition. Fang also makes a sneaky appearance in the art gallery in Sonic and the Black Knight. The gallery consists of the winning artwork from a pre-release art contest hosted by Sega. 
One of the pieces features Fang, which is a nice reminder that Sega didn't completely forget about the guy in the 2000s. From this point onwards, Fang would be intimately connected with fellow Sonic the Fighters alumni, Bean and Bark. The trio were referenced in Sonic Generations in 2011. Wanted posters depicting the three can be seen in City Escape. The wanted posters would reappear in Sonic Mania's Mirage Saloon Zone, and at the end of Mirage Saloon Zone Act 1, one of either Fang, Bean or Bark appears to shoot down Sonic and Tails. Fang is ultimately just an illusion in this game, cast by the Heavy Magician, a member of the hard-boiled heavies. You can fight Fang, Bean and Bark at the end of Act 2, where Fang hops around on his tail and fires his pop gun. That's all of Fang's video game appearances, but he's also been a prominent figure in a number of comic books too. As a British fan of the old Fleetway comics, I've always had a hard time referring to Fang as Fang because he was always called Knack by Fleetway. I am a little biased, but I'm an absolutely huge fan of the way that Fleetway fleshed out Knack's character. Knack actually first appeared as a good guy, the fifth member of the Chaotix crew, alongside Vector, Mighty, Charmy, and Espio. Knack's slimy nature is revealed quite quickly though, because he betrays the Chaotix to the evil Brotherhood of the Metallics, or Metalix. Knack is eventually caught by the Chaotix and spends time in prison for his betrayal, though he later escapes. One interesting aspect of Knack in the Fleetway comics is his technological expertise. He's quite handy when it comes to creating gadgets, and his gun is actually a shrink ray that he first tried to use to steal the treasures of the Sandopolis Zone Pyramid. Having Knack being something of a tech head kind of makes sense, because he is at least a pretty skilled mechanic. The Marvelous Queen is the fastest car in Sonic Drift 2, for example. Now, he also used his shrinking gun to take some revenge on the Chaotix and Sonic, shrinking them during a failed attempt to free Super Sonic from his imprisonment. Check my Super Sonic video for more information about that event. Knack and his shrinking technology actually played quite an important role in the comic's later stories. There is a long, extended storyline in which Knack and Grimer, who is Fleetway's equivalent to Snively, use a device to shrink down to sub-molecular level, discovering the fantastical Arabian-style world of Shanazar, where they find Robotnik, who at this point in time was presumed dead. The whole Shanazar thing is probably worth its own video, but Knack is ultimately responsible for finding Robotnik, and his technology is responsible for unshrinking Shanazar, merging it with Mobius. So he's both pretty important and willing to do quite a lot for a payoff. I've not read through all of the Archie and IDW comic books out of America, so I can only really give a brief synopsis as to how Knack has been portrayed in them. This is especially true because it looks like he's appeared in a whole bunch of different storylines. The first thing to note is that Knack was a weasel slash wolf hybrid in the Archie universe. Knack is an infamous mercenary of both people and treasures, and he's actually successfully captured and subdued both Sonic and Princess Sally Acorn multiple times, though every time he succeeds, some extenuating circumstances leads to him losing his captives or losing the rewards. Knack is technically a neutral character, motivated by greed rather than evil intent, but he holds a personal grudge with Sonic and Sally because of past altercations. Knack often works alone, but he's also been part of several different squads as well. For a brief time, he was part of the mercenary group the Destructix before leaving. He also led his own squad of weasels, which featured Jeff, Carl, and Connor, with whom Knack plotted to kidnap and ransom Princess Sally. The plan failed, and Jeff, Carl, and Connor were caught and imprisoned, though Knack got away. Knack was imprisoned too much later, and found his former gangmates to be a little salty about past events. Knack eventually fatally poisoned them, giving him a kill count. Knack actually has a pretty huge array of guns and firearms, so in the Archie universe, he lives up to the Sniper moniker. 
One final thing about Nack in the Archie comics is that he has an estranged twin sister called Nicolette, or Nick. Nick and Nack. Nick the Weasel is also a treasure hunter slash bounty hunter, though is a little less ruthless than her brother. She originally looked just like Nack, though there was a planned redesign to make her look a little more distinct. Ultimately, Nick vanished from the comics, probably because she was a Ken Penders creation, though there is a hint that Nack might have killed her off. Reportedly, later writers weren't a huge fan of Nick, so that might be the reason too. There is a hint that Nick and Nack come from a wealthy or formerly wealthy family, which is quite an interesting background for Nack. There is quite a common trope in different forms of media, but some of the best thieves come from aristocratic backgrounds, so I really like that hinted background, though it's never really explored all too much. Most recently, and this extends to the IDW comics too, Nack has served as the leader of Team Hooligan, which consists of himself and Bean the Dynamite and Bark the Polar Bear. In fact, in the IDW comics, Nack is referred to as Fang and is armed with a cork gun again. He's a pretty light-hearted villain. And that just about wraps things up. As a final comment, I'm still inclined to refer to Fang as Nack because I was born and bred on Fleetway, but slowly I'm learning to love the name Fang the Sniper. Where do you weigh in on the debate about Fang's name and his species? What sounds best and what makes most sense to you? Let me know in the comments. In these videos, I often say that X or Y character needs to make a comeback, but with Fang the Sniper, it really makes sense. If Sega don't want to put him in a game, I'd at least love to see Knack the Weasel slash Fang the Sniper appear in a future Sonic cartoon. I've always thought in my head that Knack would have an Australian accent. I don't know why, maybe it's the hat. So I'd love to see Knack make a comeback in some way, shape or form. As always, thanks for watching and hopefully, I'll see you next time.